Thank you for that introduction. I was really happy to see all of the talks until now being so multilingual and global. Um, so I, f I feel my talk kind of fits in in that perspective. Um, so I'm going to talk about not so much about my work, but more about an overview about Hebrew typography. And this talk is going to be from a personal perspective. So it's not going to be. Um, so it's going to be from my personal perspective, which means it's going to be secular and liberal and not so much looking at religious and sacred aspects of the text. Um, it's going to be contemporary, so I'm not going to look so much into the history and paleography um, and research of the development of the Hebrew type. And it's going to be looking more in, into the form of the language and not so much in the social, political, and other aspects of um, multilingual settings. Um, so the the... The name of the talk is Typographia Evrit, which means Hebrew typography in Hebrew. And when designing this intro slide, I was faced with thoughts that every person who is dealing with op opposing uh, languages deals with whether the type should um, face each other or go back to back with the writing direction, or maybe the design should be about the mixing of the languages. And this is all if we want to harmonize the text together, but maybe you want to look at contrast or differentiation. So we're going to talk about, the talk is about divided into four. Um, start with an introduction for Hebrew type, then look at milestones in modern Hebrew type, milestones in biscriptal type, and look at some biscriptal graphic design, mostly contemporary and mostly from Israel. Um, so some overview, Hebrew is both a writing system and a language with nine million speakers. Other languages that use the Hebrew script are Yiddish and Ladino. And Hebrew is mostly commonly used in Israel and in Jewish communities around the world, as can be seen in this picture from the Lower East Side here in New York um, from 100 years ago. We can see signs in English and Yiddish. Um, Lower East Side was a big uh, immigrant Jewish community uh, back then. We do know that um, Hebrew and Latin share an ancestry, um, but they, were, they developed into different directions, pun intended. So Hebrew is written right to left, which means the open forms uh, of the letters are facing to the left. But still, when you draw the letters, you draw it from the top left. So it's written in reverse direction, um, how it's read. There's 22 letters uh, in Hebrew. Hebrew is unicase or unicameral, which means there's no uppercase or lowercase. Um, there are five letters that um, get an alternate form when they're written at the end of a, letter, of a word. Um, there's one ascender and one descender, in addition to four out of the five forms uh, descending below the line. Um, the letter forms are historically reverse contrast, which means the horizontal strokes are thicker than the vertical strokes, and they're top heavy, usually. And the letters hang from a top line rather than sit on a base line. Uh, Hebrew letter height is usually uh, somewhere between the upper and lower case, um, unless it was designed to fit a specific case. Um, we will see later that some typeface is designed to match a lower case and some uh, upper case. Um, and Hebrew should include its own um, set of numerals designed to match its height. Hebrew uses Arabic numerals, uh, despite the opposite writing direction. So reading this paragraph of today's details, it's kind of hectic, and you go constantly between right to left and left to right, but you get used to it quite quickly. Um, Hebrew does not conform to Latin letter form classification of serif and sans serif. So you can see in this spectrum of serifness, um, starting from sa sans, quote unquote, at the top uh, to the most uh, serif at the bottom. In Hebrew, serifs are called uh, tags or thorns, and they are more an instro rather than the decoration. So even at the, the top one, you see some of the roofs of the letters. Um, they are part of the skeletal part of the form, so they are not, uh, even though they look like a, a slab. There's two ways of writing Hebrew. One is meruba, which is formal script. Um, it is used mostly for printed type, and the other is rahut, which is used for uh, informal and handwriting. So Latin um, has a rich array of secondary styles, as can be seen from this spread from Bringhurst, uh, that Hebrew lacks. So we do have um, bold and Roman, and, but other than that, uh, Hebrew lacks typographic tools for emphasis, differentiation, and complex layouts. 
Um, italics are practically non-existing. Um, mechanical obliques are somewhat common, but are not standardized in use for emphasis and distinction. Um, for um, Latin practices like tracking or writing titles in upper and lower case are usually substituted by uh, quotation marks for the lack of uh, italics. As you can see in this uh, example where uh, there's a need for further differentiation after weight, there's a change in typeface inside the parentheses. Um, Hebrew is mostly consonantal and has, has no dedicated vowels. Um, nikud, which means pointing, are these diacritics um, used to represent vowels. Um, it's not really common, but it can be found in text for young readers, poetry, sacred texts, and word disambiguation to compensate for the missing vowels. Um, some letters have biblical extended forms for decoration and justification of sacred texts, but this is uh, very uncommon in uh, everyday Hebrew. So we now we look at uh, five milestones of modern Hebrew type design. Um, skipping thousands of years of writing and 500 years of history and starting from the first modern Hebrew typeface, um, designed by Raphael Frank in, in 1909, released by C.F. Ruhl in Leipzig, later taken over by um, Berthold. This is considered the first uh, modern Hebrew typeface. It, even though it looks a bit high contrast, it is a much lower concerted contrast that the ones that came before it. Um, so this is Frank Real, and the vast majority of all printed body copy in Israel is still set in Frank Real. So over 100 years after um, its inception, the first Hebrew typeface is still the most common used typeface um, in Hebrew. Um, the second typeface designed by the same person around the same time is Miriam, which was uh, Frank's uh, uh, companion for Frank Real uh, for small sizes. It is the first monolinear Hebrew and quite an early example of any monolinear typeface. It was basically taking the, the process of reducing contrast from Frank Reel and, and pushing it further to basically to, its, um, to a monolinear typeface. You can see, in, you can see the roofs um, on some of these, like the, the horizontal strokes on the shorter letters. There's, they are a part of the typeface, and the next typeface took those out to further abstract um, Hebrew. Um, in the 1930s, um, the typeface is Chaim, and it is the first geometric sans inspired by Futura and other uh, Bauhaus-inspired typefaces. Next, um, designed in the 30s and 40s and released in the 50s, is David uh, by Ismar David, who has uh, spent some of his career here in New York. It is the first humanist and calligraphic uh, Hebrew typeface, and it's the first italic. Um, but it was also part um, of the first Hebrew superfamily, quite ahead of its time, even for other languages. Um, so these are drawing from the 40s, uh, but the full, the full superfamily was um, released in 2012. And the last example of uh, Hebrew type is Narkis Block, which was uh, Tzvi Narkis's first typeface. Um, inspired by modernism and popular typefaces of, the, of that time, um, and the, to, designed to match neo-grotesque of the time. And it was the first, time, first type um, out of a, a large body of work by Tzvi Narkis, four decades of Hebrew type design, and Narkis is considered by many to be um, the greatest master of Hebrew type design, setting many norms. And in many cases, uh, contemporary type designers are looking at Narkis's um, letter forms as models for um, letter forms. Uh, we will move to some uh, milestones in biscriptal type, starting from some context. So in Israel, um, multilingual typesetting is usually uh, uh, non-matching. There's no effort to match the different languages, which creates both, both um, challenges in hierarchy and uh, class. So you can see the, the left is a typical um, book in Israel where the Latin is very, like the style is not matching on the right uh, common um, street sign from the Wikipedia article for street sign in Hebrew. Um, so you can see the big differences between the languages. Uh, the f one of the first to try to resolve this disharmony between languages were uh, Eric Gill and Hugh, Hugh Schoenfeld, both British. Um, on the left, um, Eric Gill's Hebrew typeface. And you can see the bilateral serifs, which are very alien to Hebrew. Um, Hebrew never has, uh, never have um, an outstroke serif or a, a symmetric serif. It's always an instroke. Um, and on the right, uh, Sean Field's 
proposal for a new way of writing Hebrew made of deconstructed Latin shapes. And also he proposed to add a lowercase to Hebrew. Um, this was never adopted, but it's still an interesting example um, by uh, an outsider. In the 1950s and 60s, um, there were several attempts at, successful attempts at uh, resolving this uh, harmony issue between the languages. Um, first by Tzvi Narkis, as seen in the bottom left, um, inspired by Typhus Folio, and Upper Oron inspired by, inspired by um, Univer. And interesting to see that the upper one was designed to co coexist with the lowercase and the bottom one with the uppercase. On the right, we see a um, page from type specimen of Narkis Tam, a different typhus by Narkis, and the various ways it can uh, integrate with the uh, Latin uh, counterpart. In the 90s, several designers uh, like Yannick Yontif, whose typhus, typhus is shown here, were inspired by popular Latin typefaces uh, to create um, Hebrew counterparts. These were not official versions of typefaces, but just using um, pop existing uh, Latin typefaces as inspiration and to draw new forms in Hebrew. Both of these are still um, very popular today. Um, another project more recent by Yontef was uh, designing a, a Latin counterpart for a very popular um, Hebrew type, classic Hebrew typeface, not designed by him, designed by Henry Fried Friedlander. Um, in 2012, a group of uh, Israeli design designers received a grant for developing an open um, an, an open open source alternative to Arial, which is at that time all Hebrew typeface, all Hebrew websites used. Um, Arial as their web font. So this was an attempt of uh, um, challenging the default Arial and creating uh, the, probably the first bilingual web font. Um, the next milestone came from Israeli designers attending uh, master's programs in type design. Uh, the first one was Adi Stern, um, attended the Reading program in 2005 and creating the first typeface <coughs> set for um, continuous reading um, that was designed uh, as bo both languages together at the same time. And several years after that, um, Daniel Grumer um, attended Type Media in The Hague to design the first uh, triscriptal typeface designed as a set, uh, designed as a, uh, for signage um, it, that the three languages, Hebrew, Arabic, and, and Latin-based and Latin languages would work in harmony together. Um, more, more recently, Hammer is the first um, biscriptal Hebrew-Latin Hebrew variable font designed by Ben Nathan last year. Another variable font is FIT Hebrew, which is Oded Ezel's version for FIT by David Jonathan Ross. And uh, as shown previously by Irun, I'm, in 2016, Google Font um, relaunched their website, and this time they included several Hebrew typefaces, and this was actually the first time there was a resource for high quality free Hebrew typefaces. So several of those became very popular in Israel, also outside of the screens. Um, to name to its assistant by Ben Nathan and Rubik by May Sadan, uh, designed after Hubert and Fisher's Rubik on Google Fonts. Um, this, this also started a um, uh, recent interest among international type foundries in uh, creating Hebrew counterparts for their typefaces. So Typotech had a very extensive effort in collaborating with Israeli type designers to create Hebrew versions for the typefaces. Um, some interesting examples on the right, Greta Text and Fedra Serif, both um, Michal Sal's ver Hebrew versions, both introduced very interesting new shapes for um, Hebrew uh, typefaces meant for continuous reading. And Parmigiano by Yannick Yontef in the center. Interesting to see Parmigiano sans Hebrew that uses um, Latin um, stress. So the verticals are slightly heavier than the horizontal, very uncommon in Hebrew. Um, but on the other hand, um, Yannick's uh, Parmigiano um, serifs are using uh, opposing, um, like a reverse contrast and not the typical Latin contrast. Um, I think this is the first time this is being shown publicly. Um, graphic by commercial type 
um, is, now, is soon to be released uh, a Hebrew counterpart um, designed by Yannick Yontef and Daniel Grummer. And now for the, um, pr some pretty pictures. You're gonna see some uh, contemporary, mostly contemporary graphic design from Israel using, using um, uh, multiple languages, but starting with the, the holy grail of um, multi-script uh, graphic design, the polyglot Bible from Spain, uh, 500 years ago, mixing um, a million languages in one page. Um, interesting to see um, uh, Ismar David's work. Um, I mentioned him earlier, designing David Typhus. He was um, usually based, mostly based in uh, New York and creating a lot of uh, bilingual, uh, biscriptal uh, work, combining, you see on the bottom left, combining Hebrew, English, and Yiddish. Um, very interesting uh, letter forms. In, in, it it kind of feels like the letter form, the languages are in, informing the other. So some are more, um, look more Latinized in both, both languages, and some look um, more uh, Hebrewized in both languages. Um, between the 60s and 90s, Dan Reisinger, which is maybe the, the, the father of Hebrew modernism, uh, designed a lot of uh, bilingual logotypes. Uh, some of these are, are extremely common. Um, an interesting example is Lily on the le middle left, uh, which is maybe the most notoriously illegible uh, logotype in Israel. Um, contemporary examples from Michal Saar, um, which is a type designer, a graphic designer, and she really um, tries to always make the languages live in harmony and, and in equal hierarchy. An interesting example on the left is this dynamic identity that switches languages and position to kind of maintain a, a continuous um, equality between the languages. Another example by Michal Saar is this publication, multilingual publication in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. Um, kind of zoom in on the center, quite masterfully done, um, combining all languages um, and uh, in multiple voices and details. Some of the typefaces are designed by her, and some are classic Hebrew typefaces. Another multilingual publication by Ben Nathan introduces Amharic to the mix. Um, Amharic is a language of uh, many Ethiopian people living in Israel. Um, this was a newspaper for um, uh, about refugees in Israel. Um, a book I designed together with Guy Sagi of Studio Shual um, is um, combining Hebrew and, uh, and English in a in a way that's so the the typographic so the columns are actually flipped. So if you hold the book one way, you can read one language, and if you flip it 180, you can read the other language. So in, in this way, that both of the languages, the book flows together in one direction, rather than most other bilingual books that, that have a Hebrew side and an English side. And zooming in on some of the details, you can, in this example, you can see that Hebrew actually occupies 30% less than Latin. So it's very common to have different, either different type sizes or type uh, widths or uh, different column widths. In this example, um, this was before many of the bilingual um, type families were released. So in order to match the weights, um, I actually committed a typographic crime and added a stroke to some of the uh, weights to, to make sure it's matching. Another example designed with Guy Sagi is this um, catalog for a film festival, um, matching Hebrew and English, finding different um, typefaces to match, um, work together. Um, anecdote, these two typefaces were designed 80, 80 years apart, yet they still um, look like they belong to the same family. Um, another um, work with Guy, um, this um, schedule for an event in Israel, um, here, for example, on the Latin side, you can see that the typeface changes between the headline, the main text, and the details at the bottom. So the, the main text and the details are the same typeface, but the headline is a different one. But in Hebrew, it works in a different way, where the headline and the main body are the same, and the details change of, the change of font. So sometimes different settings, different settings require different logic. Um, so it's not just tra translating uh, type forms one to one. Um, another work designed with Guy Sagi is this um, identity and a brochure for a theater festival, this time combining Hebrew and German, and this time emphasizing each language's um, character rather than finding uh, something that kind of worked together. 
Um, I designed these two proposals for a stamp celebrating um, 50 years for the first Bible uh, printed in Israel. So you can see two different approaches for um, Hebrew and English working together. One is more um, equalized and one is uh, putting Hebrew um, in the front. Um, these, sign these two different signage projects by Kobe Levy of Studio uh, The League. Um, the right one is um, signage system for uh, use in Jerusalem, where the um, population is uh, more mi multilingual, so the languages are set in the equal hierarchy. Where the left, it's more of a local um, area in Tel Aviv where the population was mostly uh, readers of Hebrew, so the hierarchy is different. Um, works by Oded Ezra, which some of you might know, uh, on the right is um, a teaching tool he developed. So he translated um, SD26's logo to various scripts from around the world to show how um, stress and uh, contrast behaves in different languages. On the left, uh, to bind five languages. Um, several works by designer Avi Buchbot. Um, interesting to see, for, for example, on the right, finding two um, different typefaces that communicate the same language, even though each one has its own distinct character. Um, on the left, you can see a book with a front and the back where um, each language gets its own uh, uh, direction. And on the middle, a lettering project in, uh, in English, Hebrew, and Cyrillic. Um, new Studio Field Day. Um, interesting choices of type design, of, of typefaces, more um, communicating a diff uh, similar vibe, even though formally they don't necessarily look the same. Um, interesting publication by designers Tilz Aben Porat and Pazit Bin Yamin. Um, so this was meant for uh, Hebrew and Arabic to read uh, simultaneously. So the first two, the, the rightmost uh, two columns are in Arabic and the leftmost two columns are in Hebrew. Um, and this was meant for uh, um, parallel reading. Um, some projects by an uh, Israeli typographer, Naam Shechter. Um, on the left, very uncommon uh, language distinction by color. Um, on the bottom, a uh, table of contents sharing uh, the page numbers in the center with the, that work both for um, Hebrew and English. Um, design, uh, work by Kobe Franco, which uses um, designs a lot for the cultural sector, so you can see I especially like this uh, book cover of Jeff Wall's work. I feel like the interesting type choices um, that kind of feel the same, even if formally they're not the same. Uh, works by uh, contemporary designer and lettering artist Chen Maccabi. Um, kind of interesting um, combinations of uh, Latin and Hebrew and Arabic. Um, a lot of them, it's, it's, it's a good overview of uh, some tend to work together, and some are more uh, using contrast and differentiation between the languages. Uh, work by Design Studio, The Studio. Uh, interesting to see their example on the right, uh, stretching typefaces, um, because when, when you stretch uh, Hebrew, it has a, a more of a biblical and religious connotation, like we've seen earlier, um, whereas when you stretch it in English, it's more of a, like a design move. Some examples by uh, Noah Schwartz for um, some uh, um, art exhibition identities, uh, creating custom typography, uh, matching uh, Hebrew, English, and sometimes Arabic. Examples by um, Studio Relevant, also creating um, custom typography or modified typography in uh, Hebrew, English, and Latin. Um, top right, an interesting use of uh, reverse and uh, contrast. And last one uh, by young designer Idana Sinli, which uses um, English, Hebrew, and Arabic in a, in a harmonious and equal uh, way. Um, Toda means thank you. Yeah.